What are you doing? I, uh, I'm looking for my mask. I got it. Hey there, friend and fellow maker. You got Bill here in the shop today. We're doing some old school foam smithing today. We're making a mask. Uh, we're making the mask from the movie The Mask with Jim Carrey in it, which by the way, watched it a couple weeks ago and it's still great. Uh, we're making that mask. This is my prototype I was working on a little while ago. Uh, and we'll be using techniques from our new book, Foam Smith 3, which is all about helmets, crowns, and masks. In fact, if you like this type of mask that's going to end up looking organic and wooden, I've got an example in this book right here of uh, a similar type mask with similar type techniques, including a free pattern. And again, that's all in the third Foamsmith book. In fact, all of our books are gonna be on sale for the next week over on our website before Christmas here in the States. And if you order them this week, you'll get them to you before Christmas again in the United States. So that's what we're up to today. I've already started a pattern. I made this prototype and made a pattern that you can go download for free if you want to make this along with me. Uh, and also, if you want to see how I made this pattern, we put together a video for our extra credit members. You can head to the link down below and join either on Patreon or on uh, YouTube right here to join the Extra Credit Club. Get access to some more behind the scenes footage, including how I made this pattern. Uh, since I already have the pattern and ugh, a big sheet of foam, uh, then I can get started right now. I'm gonna cut out my pattern, start tracing, and cutting out all of my foam pieces. Handsome looking fella there. Got a lot of work done so far. Cut everything out. I use the bandsaw. Around the eyes, these dotted lines are for a bevel. I made about a 35 degree cut there. You could just cut it with a knife, but I used the tilting bed on my bandsaw and that worked out awesome. Just heat formed everything to help it along its way. And then I'm gonna glue it together. And I think I'm gonna do that in a couple of steps. Like I'll do this quadrant and then this quadrant. Same thing over here. And then I'll glue those together. And then I'll glue the whole thing together. Somebody stop me! Looks just like him.
that is our mask. That's the base form of it anyway. And I think it's looking pretty great. This is where his nose is gonna go. The nose piece here I cut from a piece of 20 millimeter foam. If you don't have that, you can just glue two pieces of 10 millimeter together. Uh, but I'm gonna set this aside for now and focus on this part. Uh, I wanna do a little bit of heat forming to get it into the shape I want. And then we're gonna do some Dremel work to contour it a little bit. Just kind of pushing it into shape a little bit, pulling the cheeks in. He's got this pronounced sort of cheekbone up here, so I'm pulling the jaw and cheek in a little bit, kind of rounding it a little bit. We'll do some more with the Dremel too. Did a little bit of shaping with my rotary tool. Um, used a, a couple of sanding drums and my stone bit. I like that stone bit for smoothing things out a little. Uh, next is the wood grain. And I'm starting with the very pronounced thicker lines and I'm just drawing them on with this marker. I'm following this reference image. This is actually a screen used prop that uh, prop store sold at some point. And I believe this is the one from the beginning of the movie that is in the treasure chest that floats. This one was specifically buoyant, probably cast out of a mold using something that could float. Uh, but it looks amazing. Uh, it looks just like the one used throughout the entire movie. So I'm using those lines to guide me for my, uh, my wood grain on here. Uh, I'm going to do the inside as well, but I just realized I should round the edges over a bit. The details are going to go all the way around and these 90 degree corners just don't suit this mask very well. So a little bit of rounding over like that. So these lines here are going to go over the edge like that and there'll be a pattern on the back as well. I've got a game plan for my wood grain here and to carve it I'm using a soldering iron. You could use a wood burning tool. You could even use a rotary tool to do it. Uh, and I will be wearing my respirator and having a fan on when I'm using this because it does melt the foam. You don't want to breathe any of that in. But before I put my respirator on, I'll show you. I'm just going to be doing this, slowly following my lines and carving in a nice deep wood grain. And that's going to look awesome once it's all done. Finished up adding all my wood grain and I am super happy with how this turned out. I ended up using my wood burner and a couple of different tips. I have this wider tip that I use for these sort of uh, more pronounced uh, deeper grooves. And then I use this uh, pointier one here to go in and do all of these sort of thinner, uh, more wily little details in there. Uh, it goes all the way around. I made the texture follow uh, the edge and go around to the back of it is very exciting. I really like how that turned out. Uh, next is going to be his nose. And we cut this piece out earlier, but we got to do a little bit of work on it before we can glue it down. Checking my reference here, and I think I need to trim my piece a bit, kind of make an arc on it. It should be a little thinner, but also not uniformly thin, something kind of like that. So it's a little thinner right there when it gets glued down. We can just zip that on the bandsaw.
This will get glued on with contact cement. I'm just brushing it on the mask part here, just where I need it. And of course, brushing more on the back of the nose piece here. Now that our glue is set up, we apply the nose. Just making sure everything is nice and centered. And there we go. Looking sharp there, buddy. Looking sharp. Okay, next we have some details to add to our nose. So I'm taking the pattern for my nose piece. I'm cutting these circles out. We're gonna add some rivets, but uh, I'll use this to trace where those rivets are gonna go so that they're nice and evenly spaced out. Do the big one as well. All right, looks good. Looking at my reference, looking at my thing, looks great. Time to make some rivets. I'm gonna make my rivets out of this two millimeter thick foam. And I've got a tube here that's the right diameter. This is a metal tube. Uh, and I'm gonna heat this up. And then press that heated foam into my tube. And that should dish it a little bit to make a kind of rivet looking shape. If I pull that off, look at that. Nice dome on there. Uh, to cut that out, uh, I want to sharpen the edge of this a little bit more. And I can do that with just a needle file here. Go in and kind of grind away at the edge until there's a nice, fine, sharp edge on it. Uh, I can use a flat one on the outside as well if there's a burr on there. So it's sharp enough to hopefully be able to cut this out by pressing down and twisting it. There we go. That is our little rivet. It looks delightful. We can uh, see how it looks. That looks pretty good. Let's make a few more of those and glue them down. I found a tube that was just a tiny bit smaller in diameter. I ended up going with that for my uh, my bits here, but now it's time to glue them down. I'm just gonna do that with super glue. I like using super glue for small details like this. It's a lot easier to manage than a big gummy brush full of contact cement. Looking great, looking great. For the bigger circle, I think I just wanna cut a round detail in, into it. So I've got another uh, metal pipe here that's about the right diameter and I've sharpened the, uh, the edge of it. So I'm just gonna use this to cut into the surface a little bit to make a little detail there. Doesn't need to go like super deep or anything. Well, that cut right in there, didn't it? There we go. We can even hit that with a heat gun if we need to open it up a little more. I think. Yeah, I think that's deep enough. Let's heat gun that a little bit. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay, time to cut out some tiny little details. I wanna make the details in the next part out of a thin foam and this two millimeter just isn't thin enough. So I'm gonna use my bandsaw to cut a slice of this foam and then use it to cut slices off of that that are really thin. I'll show you how. First, we cut a slice. Next, I will move my fence in a tiny bit, just a little bit. And then I cut another really thin slice off. And now we have a piece of foam that's super thin, even thinner than that two millimeter stuff. From that thin piece that I cut, I can cut these little strips. There we go. And <laughs> we'll use this tiny, delicate little piece here to make our details. Yeah. We'll trim it after uh, we glue it down. This knife is not sharp. 
There we go. Do that a whole bunch more times. So I'm just gluing this like halfway down because I've got to weave the decals in and out of one another. Goes over that one, but then under that one. And then extra, and then we have one more. This goes down like that, that goes over it. Now we'll make the L, which I presume stands for Loki, God of Mischief. That looks pretty good. Careful. Ah! There's no way I'm not getting glue on my hands, it's fine. That's just where that's going to be now. <laughs> I think it looks pretty good. Just making a quick stand here. These wires should be able to hold our mask. I'm going to poke it into the foam. That'll hold it upright and I can paint both sides of it without waiting for it to dry in between. Stabbing it into the foam and I'm stabbing it into a groove that I made into the uh, groove down here so I'm not poking it through an important spot or anything. Fabrication on our mask is all done. It's time for finishing, but first I want to seal this. And I'm going with uh, Flex Bond here, very similar to Mod Podge. It's like a PVA glue sort of thing. I'm going to brush it on, and that gives me an opportunity to include some more texture. So what I'll do is, uh, when I'm brushing it on, I will brush in the direction of all this wood grain that I've carved into the surface. That'll actually add more sort of lighter wood grain uh, strokes in there and it's gonna look really great. We did the same thing on our judge mask. We are ready for paint. I put on two coats of our um, Flex Bond here and let those dry. Then I just sprayed the whole thing with one good layer of primer so that we can get working on the paint. For that, I got a bunch of plaid paints here, a bunch of different sort of woodsy looking colors. I'm gonna get started uh, with a big old mop brush and just start laying down layers of paint. Pour that down a bit. I am super happy with how this is turning out so far. I've just been layering on different colors, a couple browns, some greens, a little yellow in there. Uh, and I've been watering down uh, a lot of those uh, successive layers so that they're subtle. I don't want to overdo it too much. Uh, now is the time to do the nose part. And I believe, when I look at that reference, I believe that's meant to be like a bronze that's been patinaed. So I've got some bronze paint here. I've got some aqua or a teal and some green so I can mix up like a patina color. Boop.
That's looking pretty spectacular. I like it. Uh, up next, I want to do a wash over this whole thing, a nice dark wash. But before that, I want to protect everything I've done so far with a little bit of gloss varnish. Looking good, our varnish is dry, it's nice and glossy, but it looks far too clean. So I've got some brown and black paint here, just mixing up a little mess of it. And we're gonna do a dark wash over this whole thing. Thin it a little bit with water, and then we're just gonna go bonkers. Oh no, it's ruined, you painted the whole thing, ah. Mostly I'm making sure that I get down in the, uh, all that wonderful wood grain detail that we have. But when I wipe this away, that should be. Get that wet. There we go, that's what we want. It's gonna mute all the colors a little bit and add some contrast down in the, uh, in the wood grain there. That's great. I've done half of it, so this got weathered, this did not. You can see this is shinier, it's more saturated. This side here, the colors are a little bit muted and all of the uh, lower details are all filled in with that darker paint. This is what I'm going for and I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Just gotta finish this side. I really love how that dark wash kind of took everything where it needed to go. One more step, one more ridiculous thing I want to try. I've got this color shift paint here, this is purple flash. In the movie, when he looks inside the mask and rotates it, there's a little shimmer. I'm thinking if I put a light coat of this, I'm gonna water it down a bunch, put a light coat in there, I might get a similar effect. Probably won't look exactly the same, they probably did it in CG, but I'm gonna give this a try. Hmm, sponge water. I'm gonna apply this with a uh, damp sponge here. I'm just gonna add a little bit here and there. I always add more if I want to. We'll see how it looks. That worked out okay. I think I might do a second coat, just make it a little more obvious. That's it, we're all done. <laughs> I'm so, so happy with how this turned out. Look at that, wow. That looks really cool. Uh, that's fabulous. I love this so much. Ah, I just watched this movie like two weeks ago and now I have my very own mask, my own artifact that I'm gonna keep along with the rest of my fabulous artifacts. Uh, thank you so much for checking out the video. Like I said, we have a sale going on, a last minute holiday sale going on right now. Uh, if you want to get Foamsmith 3 and really dive into all of the techniques for making helmets and masks, kind of like these here, Foamsmith 3 is the book for that. That'll be on sale for this week along with our other print books if you want to get one for yourself or as a gift for a friend or family member. You can order it at PunishProps.com and if you order it by the end of this week then uh, we can guarantee we'll get it there by Christmas. Whew. Thank you so much for watching. This has been amazing. I've had so much fun building this. Thank you to the members of our Extra Credit Club for supporting us over the years, especially this year. We couldn't have made it without you guys and your generous support helping us keep the lights on and the heat on, which has been fabulous. So thank you so much. There will be links down below if you would like to join and get access to weekly behind the scenes vlogs and shop projects. That'll do it for me and my awesome mask <laughs> here in the shop. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next build.